welcome back everyone welcome back to the warrior tv monday number four welcome to the semi-finals it's been an intense tournament so far and we have only three series left both semis and the grand finals and here we have our first two semi-finalists as spawning in the top left hand corner of oceanborn we have the chinese terran player the red terran representing weibo gaming it is Oliveira. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have as well we have the Danish Protoss player, the blue Protoss representing Psystorm Gaming. It is Max Pax. We go. We have our PVT, we have our first semis. And again, this is a matchup that Oliveira has been improving in quite a lot over the past year of play. Um, was quite public about it, did have an interview where Oliveira did explain that for a long time he was struggling in this matchup, that he was uh, in a way maybe overthinking, was thinking too far ahead, um, and was kind of in his own head a little bit when it came to the matchup. And then he spoke to Maru. And what did Maru say? Some very wise words. He said, mate, you're, you're using your brain too much, Matthew. You're <laughs> You're overthinking things and you should just try to focus on your build and try to make your opponent react to you instead. So as a result, Oliveri has been taking a more aggressive stance and has been a lot more successful as a result. Very much so in the face of his Protoss opponents and yeah, we'll see how he compares to Max Pax. Max Pax, of course, is the best Protoss player in Europe. But we have seen him falter. We have seen him show weakness against Bjorn in last week. We've seen him show weakness against Clem. But Clem is, you know, best player in the world. So that's it. It's a little bit different. Which is also why I'm excited to see how he compares to Oliveira. I'd love to see an ace match. Regardless of how this goes, I'd love to see a back and forth. Um, I would not want to see a 2-0 in either direction. But we'll see. We'll see where the series will take us. Also, before I forget, I apologize. I just got it. It's got into the cast if you're in the chat ah get your gamba going predictions are now open place your bets on who you think will take the series you have a couple of minutes to make that decision yourself will it go the way of max Pax or the way of Oliveira? best of luck best of luck i do think it's gonna be a close one so good luck with your gamba as it is gonna be a twilight council opener from max Pax. so twilight council to blink the first zealot has arrived gonna be being an annoyance here and will delay the cc We'll chase that SCV back. And, ooh, does force a couple of extra boys to be pulled as well. So far, good control out of Oliveira to save his workers. The Marines, they focus on the Zealot. The Adept has arrived. He gets one SCV. Just the one, though. So it's a nice damage by Max Max. He only kills one worker, but he did force four of the Mineral Line. He was, of course, delaying the CC as well. Damage was dealt. Damage there from Max Max. Reinforcing with a second and death will threaten the shade. So far, Oliver is keeping up. He's able to lift up those depots just in time. And behind this, getting to his own 1 1 1. Getting to safety cyclones. Bearing in mind, Olivera did not go for an SCV scout. He did not go for a Reaper scout either. Because of that, cyclones make sense. In case it was a Stargate opener with Oracles or Phoenixes, he will have cyclones to help deal with that. So just a very well-rounded follow-up here by Oliveira as he's uncertain as to what's really going on. So just opening up safely and following it up with what looks to be a Cyclone drop. At F State, they get in! Oh, that should not have happened. They do shade into the main base. They will delay the starports, or sorry, they'll delay the second racks. SCVs are going down. Boys are being pulled in. That's going to be three. That's going to be up. Yeah, three SCV kills and a full scout. So very nice damage here by Max Pax. Oliveira going to attempt a counterattack. Ooh, I do apologize for some of the frame drops that are happening in game. That's on me. Um, basically, because we were casting on Korea, the VPN is still going. So, ah, uh, I just have to turn it off. I will do so after this game. As Cyclones are pushing in. Oh. Catching two Stalkers. Not bad, but the Marines are caught out and the drop does slip into the main. Alas, Max Max is keeping up. We'll shut down the drop. Yeah, Blinks in. Takes down the Medivac. Takes down the Cyclone as well. Nice defense by Max Max. Now we can counterattack. 
War Prism is up and running. How many gateways do we have? Do we have to work with four gates? It's four gate blink. Four gate blink at a max max. Diving into the natural. Uh, we'll be punished there. We'll have to. We'll be forced back. Catching out the Raven, rotating towards the main. Tank does reposition. Oliveira does get here in time, but we'll lose the depot. And here comes another massive warp in. Again, four stalkers at a time. Takes down the depot. Threatens the main. Blinks away. Getting his throw base up and running. Max Pack's going to take an economic lead. So far, so good. No major losses here for Max Pax. Did miss the Raven, though, and the Raven will slip into the natural. Does get in. Goes with the auto start harass. At the same time, Max Pax reinforcing. Can he get Stim? Going for the tank, even. Yeah, one better. The tank goes down. Oliver trying to reposition. Another tank is going to fall as well, and this may just be too much damage. Yeah, four gate blinks. Snowballing out of control. Takes down both tanks. Boys are being pulled. SMEs are falling. And these are hefty losses for Oliveira. Yeah, again, 4 gate blink can be so punishing here. GG gets called. It's game ending damage, and Max Max will take game number one. Whew. GG. And I will turn off the VPN. <laughs> I got you. I got you. But GG, well played. Max Pax will take a lead. Um, again, it was a four gate blink build. It was very aggressive out of Max Pax. And even though Oliveira did have some decent Sim City and he had his tanks getting in position, he had no support. He did need to keep up with the rotations with his bio army, um, either with bunkers or with just the bio army keeping up to protect those tanks. As we saw, they were left vulnerable, especially the tank in the main. And time and time again, Max Pax did punish. With that, we're now getting into game number two. And this series could end here and now. Again, I'm hoping for a game three. I'm hoping for a back and forth. I feel like we didn't really get much out of game one. Game one was just, you know, four gate blink. GG. It was <laughs> there wasn't uh unfortunately there wasn't really much counterplay available there for Oliveira. Um, just because he was so underprepared for those uh for those blink stalkers. So hopefully we can get a little bit more out of game two. Here we go, spawning in the top left-hand corner of Ghost River, we have the Chinese Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Weibo Gaming, it is Oliveira. Down in this series, yes, fight back here and now to force the ace match and spawning in the top right-hand corner, one game away from making it to the grand finals, we have the Blue Protoss, representing Sidestorm Gaming, it is Max Pax. There we go. Now everything is smooth. Again, uh, for those who are curious, because we were we were uh, casting on the Korean server earlier, I did have a VPN going, um, but I, I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> so that's why there were some frame drops in the last game, but now everything should be uh, as smooth as could be. Everything should be uh, much more yeah, comfortable now. If we do end up going back to Korea, though, we'll have to turn it back on, so I have to remember that. Do have to remember. Max Pax is moving out across the map, just going for his scouts. Oliveira opening up with a single gas geyser. So just an economic opener here from our Red Terran. It's just going to be an economic star start. Racks expand. The probe will confirm. Oliveira, he checks, sorry, Max Pax checks that gas geyser, confirms it hasn't been taken. And now Max Pax knows that a CC is on the horizon. Is aware. Speaking of CC, it's being thrown down to the high ground. The probe does attempt to rescout, and Max Pax is denied. Um, he can make an educated guess that there is a command center, but technically it could be like a weird one base all in, um, with like a delayed second gas or second and third racks. Like there's like some quirky like fringe builds. For the most part, though, Max Pax should be feeling pretty safe. Uh, should be. As the players are settling in. 
and we'll see. I mean, Max Max should be going for another Twilight Council Blink based opener. The reason why I say this is because the map is quite small. Um, larger maps are where Phoenixes can thrive. So Stargate openers, they can do really well on a map like Alkyone, on Site Delta, for example, they can really thrive. On smaller maps, it's that much riskier to really embrace that just because you can be punished so hard and so quick by a ground based army. So there's Twilight, there it is, Twilight Council all the way from Max Max. Again, very sensible, very safe. The Adept does also get eyes on the factory and the lack of add-on. Hellions are being produced. Hellion is also revealed to the Shade. Oliver going for a Cyclone follow-up. Likewise, Adept say do Shade past the main army. Up the ramp, Adept goes down. Yeah, these are so nice trades here for Max Rex. We'll eventually lose the Adept. But let's take down the Hellion. With that, Oliver can finally expand, following this up with Cyclones with his own drop. Until then, Max Rex, he's again just trying to poke in and find whatever value he can. He's going to be shut down by the Cyclone, though. Yeah, the Stalker should fall. So nice pick up here from Olivera. And behind this, the question becomes, how many gateways? We already knew the blink was coming, and so far we have one gateway in the main. We have a second gateway here at the natural, soon to be a third. So three gate blink at least. And do we just go up to four gates? We could. Marines do drop in. Cyclone getting a local, but there's a shield battery. There's Nova charge. Oh, Cyclone goes down. And Oliveira has to pull away. Unfortunately, was unable to save that Cyclone. Without it, Oliveira can't really push in. And Max Max is going for a very safe opener. This time, only three gates. So it's going to be three gate blink into a third. So a safer, more economic opener from Max Max this time compared to game one. Of course, the Stalkers have to be respected, and Oliveira has to be ready for this. We have a bunker on the low ground. We have a tank as well. Soon to be a tank on the high ground as well. Stalkers do poke in. They don't quite get anything, though. Max Max does overextend, rotating towards the main. But the tank will arrive in time. Yeah, the tank is ready. You can see the bio army in between the bases. Oliver, he does respond. Trying to bait the army into tank range. Oh! Tank bullet goes off. Max Max hits one marine. At the same time, Autosar drives across the map, getting a probe. Uh, just the one. It's the one worker. Threads a dive into the main. Max Max getting a fourth, or at least looking to, getting his third up and running. And the game will continue. We, we, we can get into it some StarCraft. Let's go. <laughs> Did I speak too soon? Max Max blinks in. Going for the Marines. Going for the tank. Uh, he's going to be punished, though. There are two Marauders behind this. Stim is not quite yet done. Nice blinking and nice juggling from Max Max. Does pull away. Boys being pulled as well. Trying to get into the mix. Oh, the jungle micro, though, from both players, Max Max and Oliveira. Oliveira will hold, Oliveira will survive, but he did lose a tank. Alas, with the completion of Stim, Max Max shouldn't be able to get much done. As he does hit the natural, gets another tank! Ah, Oliveira out of position, tank goes down, bunker as well. Again, Oliveira had just having a hard time keeping up. With both tanks falling, Oliveira, he can't really counterattack. Not as hard. Not anymore. Gets a Stalker. Gets another. Let's get a third. But last Max Max, he does blink away in time. Scan reveals full saturation. Reveals the gas being taken as well. And Oliveira, he has to get something done. 
He's going for a third. It is spotted by the observer. Max Max, he's aware. He knows. Raven dipping in. Gets a probe. Gets two. Oh, gets three. <laughs> three probe kills. Not bad. We spoke earlier, but fourth base is not being taken by Max Max. Game oh. paused. And it looks like we do have a bit of a pause here. Hopefully everything is okay, uh, whether it's some um, hardware issues or, uh, again, maybe something's happening IRL. It's all good. More than happy to take a moment here. Thankfully, there's no big fight happening. There's no big engagement. There is currently a lot of pressure on Oliveira, but at least he's kind of survived the early game, which is more than I can say for game one. At least Oliveira, he has a presence on the map. But uh, it's still a very tense situation here. And Max Pax, I mean, in the midst of taking a fourth base, uh, the pressure is on Oliveira. Ooh. Okay, okay, we're good. Looks like there was an issue with the monitor. Game resumed. Ooh. We do get back in. So Max Pax does catch two SCVs. Bling into the main. Oh, the mind shots. Oh, the punish. Not bad. Would have mind to go up. They take down a good chunk of stalkers. Nice spread there from Max Pax, avoiding splash damage. That could have been so much worse. But regardless, it's going to be a one-way trip, and we do overextend. Max Pax throwing away almost every single stalker. One stalker recalls back home. One stalker makes it back. Yeah, Max Pax gets punished so hard for being overly aggressive. And now Oliveira suddenly has momentum. Suddenly Oliveira can break out. You can see Max Pax is desperately, re desperately getting ready for a counterattack. Zelts towards the natural, Zelts towards the south. But Oliveira, he sends everything right down mid. And can Oliveira break the main army? There are force fields. Uh oh. Yeah, the force fields at this choke point can be brutal. Oliveira, he avoids it. Back at home, reinforcements, they clean up the Zelts. A lot of SCVs are going down. Oliveira, he's going to be that much more committed, that much more all in. We'll at least zone the army away and we'll take down the expansion. Oh, nice on Burrow. Oliver is saving the mine shot up for a probe. Zelz is still havoc. More SVs are going down. Oh, Oliveira, he's just completely all in. There are the force fields. A nice pick up there from Oliveira. Does save most of his units, but time is working against him. He has to keep going. He killed the fourth. That's good, but not good enough. He is down to 32 SCVs. Ah, now there's a Colossus. Colossus has arrived. The bio army is that much more vulnerable. Hitting with the stalkers. Pulling away. Zealous, they keep the reinforcements back at home as well. And Oliveira has begun ghost production, but again, like, I, it, he's got to pull the trigger soon. I don't know if he can afford to wait for ghosts, but even then, I feel like he might have just missed his window. I mean, with, arrival, with the arrival of the Colossus, it's going to be hard to break. Here come reinforcements. There's one Viking. Just rallying everything across the map. The ghosts have arrived. Observer does confirm the ghost. Oh. And on Max Max, he wants it. He wants the ghost. Oh, gets an EMP. Yeah, force the EMP, the, the stalkers, instead of the main army. The Colossus are exposed. Massive pickup. Gets one. One Colossus goes down. Send Colossus as well. It looks like Oliveira has done it. He's, he has broken through. Max Max was being cheeky. He was catching out the ghosts. But really, Max Max, he exposed himself. He exposed himself. The Immortals went down. The Colossus as well. There's one more Colossus on the way. But it looks like Oliveira has done it. We gotta keep going. Gets a third. And again, he has to keep pushing. He's checking the fourth once again. But there is no expansion. Stims back in. Going for a Doom Drop. Colossus has arrived. But the army drops into the main. Going for the production. Can a Max Max hold with one Colossus? Gateways are depowered. Oh, Extendable Lance is denied. And Oliver, he has to play carefully. Has to pull away. Respecting the Colossus. No! Leaves one ghost behind! Oh, it was a tough call to make. One ghost starts fall. That's a pretty big pickup. Oliveira gets forced out. Suddenly, Oliveira has the better economy. Up to 45 SCVs. The power of the mule! 
Let's go. Economically, he's back in the lead, and now suddenly Max Pax is the one that's all in. He's down to two bases, down to one and a half base economy. But can he break his opponent with two Colossus? Serve the lamps. Ah, almost done. It's about to finish. And this army is down to one ghost. As one did go down earlier. Okay, more ghosts coming in. Observer gets sniped. Oh, nice save. Oliveira. <laughs> Top save the winner mine. Nice spread there by Max Pax. Avoid splash damage. DT into the main. Dark Templar are waddling in. Oh, they're pulling Oliveira apart. DTs in this kind of game state are brutal. There's one more DT at the natural. It's slipping in. SCVs are going down. Oliveira, though, he wants the fight. Lands the EMP. Takes down the Colossus. And it looks like Oliveira, he should have enough. Yeah, it comes in for the surround. It cleans up every single unit. And we go into the ace match. GG gets called. And Oliveira ties up the series one to one. We're going to game three. Let's go. <laughs> GG, well played. A very intense game. Max Pax, he did have a very strong start. We essentially forced an all-in out of Oliveira. And I was concerned. I was concerned that Oliveira was taking too long. Um, if you remember, Oliveira, he was all-in. He moved out. He killed the fourth, but he needed more than the fourth base. And that was the moment where Max Pax, he scouted. He saw the ghost production. He did rally and rotate his stalkers all the way around to snipe the ghost. He did get it. But that also meant that his main army was exposed. His specifically Robo units. The Colossus and the Immortal, they were exposed because the Stalkers, they were on their own mission. Um, and in that moment, Oliveira, he pulled the trigger. He sniped every single Robo unit, and that was it then and there. Did break the defenses at the third. Did break Max Pax's army. GG. GG, well played. Ooh, a very intense game. Now... We're getting into the ace match. And again, this is all that I did once, at least, is a back and forth ace match between Oliveira and Max Pax. We can now embrace it. And how does this story end? Does Oliveira advance onto the finals, or does Max Pax bounce back? Let's find out. Let's go. As spawning in the bottom left-hand corner of Alkyona, we have our Chinese Terran player, the Red Terran, representing Weibo Gaming. Tying up the series one to one. Can he take it all the way? It is Oliveira. And spawning in the top right hand corner, we have the we have the Danish Protoss player, the blue Protoss representing Psy Storm Gaming, being forced into the ace match. Can he bring it back? It is Max Pax. Here we go. As we can take a moment, we can take a breath. Max Pax is going to be settling in. So is Oliveira. And every game so far, Max Pax has gone for a Twilight Council opener of some kind. Game 1 was 4 Gate Blink. Game 2 was 3 Gate Blink. Game 3, with a, on a much larger map like Alkyone, we could see a Stargate opener instead into Phoenixes. We could see 2 Gate Blink into a faster third. Uh, Max Pax can afford to be a little bit greedier on a map like this. We'll see. Or he might just revert back to aggression, like game one, and just go four Gate Blink Stalker and just send it. As Oliveira is going double gas. Interesting. Double gas opener out of the Terran player. I think this is the first time in this series that Oliveira is opening up double gas. I believe so. Now with this, this means that the CC is going to be delayed and Oliveira is going for a faster factory. Max Pax didn't... Oh, I believe he may have seen the uh, transferring SCVs, or I should say the mining SCVs. So there go, Max Pax does confirm. Factory gets placed. And from here, Oliveira can go into a Widowmine drop opener, he can go into a Cyclone drop, he can go into Reacted Reaper Hellion, he can even go into a one base all in. What's it gonna be? With this SCV, okay, we're gonna be expanding on the low ground. Oliveira, he's going for his command center, thankfully, no one base all in, but aggression nonetheless. As we said, Lindsay's the always shout. Oh, is that. Is that really Kozan? <laughs> oh my god, it's really him! 
Let's go. A shout out to Kozad in the chat. Thank you so much, Papi. Gracias, gracias. Hope you have been having a great time. Hope you've been enjoying yourself. Take care, Papi. Take care. Thank you so much for subscribing for two months. Gracias, Papi. Gracias. Quack, quack. Down. Now, with that double gas opener, we have confirmation. It is a double reacted Reaper Hellion. So, it is a very aggressive opener here. Reaper Hellion. Adept does dip in. We'll get a scout. We'll delay the command center. Nice pickups here from Max Max. Won't quite get the SCV, but does delay. And does get eyes on the initial unit production. Now, with this many Reapers and Hellions, the goal is to bust into the mineral line. Is to break, break through the defenses here of the gateway units, the stalkers, and the adepts. Get into a mineral line and roast up those probes. We'll see if Elevera can pull this off. See if he can pull it off. For now, the uh, Zelnaga will confirm. First Reaper goes down. Massive pickup. The Depths take Shade Pass, and they force the entire army back home. Oliveira, he's forced all the way back. Has to respond. The Depths they delay the CC even further. Massive pickups. Two more SCVs go down. Oh, and this opener from Oliveira, it's not really working out too well here. Again, time is working against him. The longer this goes on, the more difficult it's going to be for this army to get into the mineral line and actually get some damage. Likewise, was delayed, was brought back. Big delay in the CC. Adepts, they just keep shading in. This time, there are Marines. And finally, Olivera can focus on his aggression. But back at home, there are Stalkers. It's too late at this point. There are Stalkers. There's Sim City. There's a wall off. Max Pax has help. Now, behind this, Olivera is getting to his own 311, working towards a Stim follow up. It's not like Oliver is out of this game, but the opener was just a little bit lackluster, just because of how committed and how aggressive it was. Well, Oliver following up with Stim with tank production. Likewise, we do have our opener from Max Pax. It is going to be Blink. So once again, Twilight Council with the Blink. How many gates? We have two gateways in the main, and we have two gateways at the natural. Looks like we are reverting back to game one. It's going to be four gates, Blink Stalker. Oh boy. And now I'm even more concerned for Oliver. Uh, <laughs> We're going to have a lot of Stalkers to work with. Max is going for a massive counterattack. And what is it to defend? There's one tank on the low ground. There's one tank on the high ground. But there are zero bunkers. Uh-oh. There we go. Bunker has now begun. At least at the natural. Stalkers have arrived. This is going to be a tough hold for Oliveira. Stalkers, they go for the dive. Yeah, the first tank goes down. Massive pickup. Bunker is too late. Uh, the army is going to be able to punish some of these Stalkers at least. One Stalker goes down. Ah, but just the one. As the bunker is about to finish, but still needs a couple more seconds. Bunker is delayed. More stalkers on the way. Max Max, he knows how close he is to just breaking Oliveira here and now. Bunker does finish. Tank is able to replace. Tank does reinforce. Max Max rotates over into the main. No bunker in position, but we have two Marauders. Marauders have arrived just in time. And Oliveira holds. Oh boy, <laughs> that was intense. Does force back the army. Again, the Marauders, they popped out just when he needed the most. Uh, Max Pax is coming back in. The Observer does spot the rotation. Max Pax trying to pull his opponent out of position. Does lead to low ground. Once again, one more tank goes down. Another tank as well. Uh, Oliveira just doesn't have the supply to defend both locations at once. Does target down another Stalker. The Stalkers are so low. But Max Pax, that's been three stalker, sorry, three tank kills already. He's not done. He reinforces once again. And he will take down the bunker. Repair is not in time. And it looks like Max Pax may just be able to overwhelm. Uh, but Oliveira does have Stim. He sips forward. Forces back the stalkers. Behind this, Max Pax getting his third base up and running, working towards charge. Forge on the way for plus one. And again, it's just a numbers game at this point. GG gets called. Oliveira, he gets overwhelmed. And Max Pax will take the series 2-1, to one, advancing on to the Grand Finals. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. The punish was real. Oliveira had a very aggressive start with the initial Reaper Hellion. It was lackluster. It didn't really get any damage done. And that meant that Oliveira, he was just the one step or even half step behind when it came to setting up his defense. We saw that the bunker was a couple of seconds too late. Because of that, the natural was abused. We saw the first tank going down real quick. And uh, Max Pax, he snowballed from there. T sniping tank after tank and never really allowed Oliveira to stabilize. 
Never did allow him to stabilize with that GG well played. Max Max will advance on to the grand finals, and the question becomes who will face off against him. It's going to be a TVP between Let's Go.